G'day and welcome to another edition of the Rev Up brought to you by Crowcast, our first Rev Up after the bye. Woo! <laughs> and we come right back into a crucial game, probably a season defining game this week. I'll Karen. tell you what, I've sort of done a bit of a ladder predictor, and if we want to make top four, there's a few games, and this is one of them where we've got to get a couple of them. If it's not this one, we've got a few games later on in the year that are going to be pivotal. So, yeah, wins are. Every win is going to matter at the moment. Yeah, the second half of absolutely. The year. Yep. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, talking about last week's match, how did you think we went against the bye? Uh, yeah, really good, actually. Although <laughs> we seem to suffer a few injuries. It was yeah. obviously a really hard fought slog. Yeah, the- <laughs> on the training track. Yeah. Well, I think they all went to Byron, yeah. so, you know, I don't know what they were doing up there, but see why I got a Blood, shin. Bloody Gold Coast. <laughs> yeah. Byron's in New South Wales, dude. Oh. <laughs> anyway, enough I'm, of the geography lesson. I was really good at geography at <laughs> school. Uh, look, let's crack straight in and get to the team, shall we? Yeah, we're going with Geelong first. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so Geelong. From the full-back line, we've got Zach Tui, Colin Jasney, and O'Connor. Um, half-back line, we have Henry, Taylor, and Tom Stewart. Centre line, they've got Dangerfield on the wing, Tim Kelly in the centre, and Duncan on the other wing. Uh, half forward line, we have Dalhouse, Fogarty, and Hawkins. Um, full forward line, Ablett, Buse, and Atkins. Following, they've got Blitzarves named at Ruck. Interesting. Interesting. We'll talk about that later. Um, Guthrie and Selwood as the followers. And then your interchange is Stanley, Myers, Jordan Clark, and Parfit. Emergencies are Parsons, Zach Smith, Wiley Buzzer, and Scott Selwood. So the two ins that they've brought in is Fogarty and Buse. Obviously, the injury to Rowan with the, the yeah. hit that he got from Amon. Yeah. Um, but then they've omitted Fort, which suggests they're going a little bit shorter. And they've brought in Fogarty for him. Yeah, so, yeah they have gone smaller, yeah, haven't they? Well, in that forward line, yeah. Mm. So Hawkins is their only legitimate tool so far. Yep, yep. interesting. Mm. For the Crows, uh, look, interesting as well. We've got a couple of force changes, obviously, with JJ, Wayne Miller and Cameron Ellis. Yolman mm. coming out with a shin. Uh, so from the back lines, we've got Lukey Brown, Daniel Talia and the desk. Uh, across half back, we've he got... He hates s- that name. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Get a kick, Rory. Oh. <laughs> Stitch up. Uh, half back, we've got Smithers, uh, the ex-cricketer, and uh, what do we call Bryce? Probably Bryce. Just uh, Bryce just is his Bryce. name, I think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got Golden Boots across the middle with Brad Crouch and uh, Jake Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan the Gooch, Tex the Walker and Richard the Lucky across oh, half forward. That joke wasn't funny the second time either. It's the second time I've heard that one today and it's is not it? good. Yeah, it's Who not told good. you before? You did. Pretty, uh, <laughs> you did. Uh, Hugh the Thor, uh, Elliot the Himmelberg and Eddie the Betts at full forward. Um, really Riley O'Brien rucking Just with, stop, stop. with Matt and uh, Sloan Dog. Sloan Dog. Yeah. Don't mind that one. In, Interchange, we've got Seed, mm-hmm. uh, Hardo and Benny Davis. <whistles> Benny Davis debuting in the biggest game of the season. Get around the young fella, Don't by the way. Get Don't around the it. young fella. Uh, Deserza and Lockie Murphy uh, rounding out the interchanges. Emergencies, we've got your boy D-Mac. What happened? It was such a promising start of the year, and now he can't even buy a game. He gets games when he doesn't deserve them and then gets left out when he probably deserves a run. I reckon what's happened is he's moved house, right? <laughs> what? And the envelope with the pictures in it has gone missing. Oh, so, from the pictures that he had on, <laughs> on Pike. Yeah, okay. So, it, like, Pike has gone, you lost those pics there, haven't you, D-Mac? And D-Mac's oh, and you're out. Anyway, Chase Jones, slightly unlucky, I think. Andy Otten. Where did he come from? No, he's the professional emergency. When and they don't know who else to name in the emergencies, that's, that's yeah, what that's they true. name. And Source Jacobs. Pretty, really? Second Ruckman, Source Jacobs. <laughs> Pretty full on that he can't get a game, and that's just it a is. testament to yeah. Riley's form, I yeah. think. In we got Bryce Elliott Himmelberg in for JJ. The Berg. Uh, big job for Elliott mm. this week. And Benny Davis, obviously, debuting. Out goes Jenkins with a knee, Miller with a back. Ellis Yeoman with the shin. Yeah, a bit of talk that Miller had played with his back injury against uh, Richmond a couple of weeks ago as well. So. Yes, well, the lovely Nikki on uh, the rap show, uh, who always seems to find out those little tidbits, mm. uh, got a jab before the game. Yeah, okay. And uh, may not have done him any good. Well, he didn't hit a target the entire day. No. Night, even. So, no, um, he didn't. Which is unlike him, but yeah. anyway. Uh, let's have a look at the zones, mate. Zone by zone, and let's have a look at the Geelong defence first up against the Adelaide forwards. Yeah, well, look, I think you don't rate their back line, but I think it's a, a lot more solid than what you give it credit. Tom Stewart, all Australian defender. Harry Taylor, I know he's old, but 
previously an All Australian defender, and I'm pretty sure a multiple All Australian defender. Um, you got Jack Henry, who's a younger bloke, but is shown that he can be quite good. Um, O'Connor, don't really know much about him, so I won't comment. Um, Collar Jasney is solid, nothing special, and Zach Tui is their rebounder and can be quite damaging turns games. In terms of how we line up on them with our forward line, it's going to be interesting because we don't really have a lot of bona fide goal kickers in our forward line this week. No, and it's probably going to be uh, one of the things that uh, is going to be really telling whether we can get enough goals out of that forward line. Well, really, the only one in there that we've got that is a bona fide goal kicker is Walker, and his form this year has been streaky. He's yeah, been, it has he, been streaky. He's been good the last couple of weeks. But yeah, he, trending upwards. Yeah, but he's not. He's sort of going up and down, up and yeah. down. So you never really know what you're going to get week to week. What we saw, though, last time Elliot Himmelberg was in the team was how much more Tex enjoyed it. He seemed to have more space. Yeah. Uh, Elliot seemed to play a very traditional centre-half forward role yep. and, and knew how to clear out and give Tex some space. Yep. I don't think Tex is going to get a lot of space this week. No, well, because he's the one that they're going to they're going to earmark and go, we need yeah. to stop him. The only And look, Eddie kicks goals, don't get me wrong, but he's sort of... His um, trajectory has gone from three or four a game to one or two, um, and he's still kicking them from everywhere, but we're not getting the same level of output as we mm. used to get out of him, and I think that's just probably age catching up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and maybe teams are getting a bit more wise to his antics. Um, and then the only other one really that's had impact on the scoreboard this year is Greenwood. But again, really, it's only been 10 goals this year that he's yeah. kicked. So, Well, and that means that we're going to rely a lot on two very young players, Benny Davis, yeah. first gamer. He's going to have to hit the scoreboard yep. you know we can't have any first game nerves from Ben <laughs> just straight in yeah. hit scoreboard and the Berg yeah well that's true the Berg can't have any yips either he's got to go yep. straight through the middle as well so we're also going to rely heavily on the midfield as well agree we're going to need Sloan Dog and B Crouch and maybe even a bit of um, Brody Smith or um, Jordan the Gooch yeah I'm thinking more Seedsman as well yep. to get forward and kick one or two each um, because really I'm, I worry for our goal kicking power and even though Though the matchups from their back line to our forward line seem good, I just don't know where the goals are going to come from. Well, I think, you know, uh, Lockie Murphy's going to spend a bit of time yeah. up for, or a fair bit of time on the ground. He's named on the bench, but I don't think that team's anywhere near what they're going to look like. Yeah, it never is. Um, and, uh, you know, so he, he's going to need to hit the scoreboard. Richard Douglas, who's a lucky, lucky man, <laughs> needs to repay the... No, but no, honestly, he needs to repay the faith. Yeah. We, we need two to three goals out of Richard Douglas. Hmm. Um, you know, because otherwise, why is he there? Yeah, and look, the argument could be he missed a lot of footy at the start of the year for his injury. They might be just giving him a couple of games to try and find his feet. You'd think being a senior player, though, you shouldn't need that long. Having said that, though, maybe it's a, a, a case of they're trying to figure out what the best 22 looks like. They're going to give him, you know, three or four or five games to stake his claim and if he doesn't cut it maybe they'll get rid well, of him and, that, and that's fine but I don't care if Dougie gets five kicks as long as he kicks three goals with them I'm sure they'd probably feel the same as well yeah. as long as his defensive efforts were there as well yeah, yeah, they yeah. probably wouldn't care either midfield mm. probably uh, well not probably Geelong Definitely. star started um, midfield well everywhere you look every single position Dangerfield Kelly Duncan um, Guthrie's not he's more of a stopper and then Selwood yeah well I need Blitzart so you can put into that category yeah. he's pretty good Ablett rolls through there yeah um, yeah just, yeah. just star studded you know and I would say you know to be honest with you our midfield is blue collar blue collar a lot of hard workers a lot of oh, coal right, yeah. face action um, you know Brad Crouch is probably the star of the show yeah, in terms of yeah. in terms of offensive output, but he's definitely the one getting the most notice because he is yep. offensively um, more geared in yep. his game. Um, Sloan is obviously the the yeah. powerhouse workhorse. Matty Crouch will accumulate, um, but we need we need a lot from those boats, and we'll probably see a fair bit of Huey Greenwood through the middle too. I think because I don't mind that, my boy. I don't mind it either yeah. because you know he's got the ability to stay composed in tight and keep the arms free and, and actually be creative with the disposal out of congestion. So. And I actually think that it's going to be a big game for Huey because him and CEY are fighting for that last role in the midfield. And I'm honest, if I'm honest, I think Cam's sort of got him at this point in the year. I think Greenwood provides a little bit more up forward than what Cam does. But in terms of midfield time, Cam's taken all of his midfield time. and it's... Oh, I think there's room in the team for both. I don't know. I, I think there is. Yeah. This year. Yeah, maybe. Next year... 
with Chase Jones well, and Ned and McHenry, Neb, Neb McHenry I'm not so sure. Yeah, and that's sort of what I mean. They're fighting for that last spot, I think. Mm. And I love Huey, but I've also loved Cam this year as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really massive. If Huey's going to get a lot of midfield minutes, he needs to have an impact. I agree. Yeah. And to me, uh, I, we've probably seen Hugh's limitations a bit this year, I reckon. I don't know if he's fit. Well, maybe not, but... Because remember, he missed the first, what, three or four games? He's never... Yeah, he did. But, yeah. And he did have an interrupted pre-season. But he's never been one to really break free of congestion and all that. He's very much an inside player. Yeah. Or he's a forward. Did that one explode? No. That's the one I dropped. Yeah, well, roughly. Because that <laughs> could have been the end of the bloody <laughs> show. <laughs> I was like, oh, hang on. You could have fried the microphone <laughs> yeah. all over the camera and everything. But anyway. Um, so you're right. Um, and look... I'd hate to see Hugh go. Yeah, me too. But there's a reason why they haven't re They re-signed two today. They re-signed two young lads, um, Jordan Butts and uh, Benny Davis. Oh, Extensions. Did yeah. I didn't see that. Um, and yet here we are still waiting on, on something for Hugh. Yeah, but we're so, also waiting on Alex Keith though, so... Well, and I, but I think they're opposites. I think Keith is holding out for more. I think Greenwood is happy to sign. Yeah. So I think they're two different situations. Well, there's talk that we're going to trade Greenwood. Well, and maybe we do, Cam. Oh, I might. No, in fact, I will just quit altogether. No, no, no. You've got to be objective. You've got to take no, the heart out of it. Because I, I love the Thor. I do. I really do. But I can see why. He's my why. screensaver, Dad. He's my screensaver. Is he? Yeah, he is. Look, I'll show you. What a fat... No, don't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what a fanboy. Yeah, he's um, the man. But the thing of it is, I can see why they would do it because he's got value. Like, put him in a team like Carlton or St Kilda would love Hugh Greenwood. Well, they're talking about Collingwood and part of the Grundy thing if we go after Grundy. No, we won't go. I don't think so anymore no. either, but no. yeah. So I can see why that's happening. And, and getting back to the point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, so uh, back. What game is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it is a big game for Huey. Hmm. If he wants to stay at the Crows and if he wants to forge a position in the yep. Crows long term. Force him to sign him. He, he needs he needs to play well. Yeah. Um, oh, look, our our, our defence I think uh, looks really good on paper against their forward line, uh, except that it's a little bit taller than maybe it needs to be. We've said that every week though. Mm. We've always said every time that we've come up, we've gone, oh look, we've got three tools in Hardigan, Talia, and Keith. How's that all going to go on this small forward line? But whenever Hardigan doesn't play, Keith has to take a more defensive role, and it cuts our yeah. ball movement up. Yeah. And it, Absolutely. and it ruins Keith's biggest strength, which is getting off and you know creating and yep. chopping out in the air and whatever. So, yep. you know, I'm, I'm inclined just to leave it, to be honest. I'm, I'm happy that they brought him in. I, it's weird that they named him on the interchange. You said before the cast that you're thinking he might be a late out. It's possible. Um, for my boy D-Mac, but... Possible. I don't, I, I don't mind the way it is, to be honest. The only thing that worries me about their forward line and our matchups is Gary Ablett and... Mm. I'm sure most teams would have that same headache every week when they're thinking about selection. But on the ground, I think Brian has got Ablett. Well, not got him, but he's going to be a good matchup. Who? It, sorry? Oh, Brown. Did I say Brian? Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> Brown. <laughs> Bring me Brian. Bring me Brian. I think Brown's a good matchup on the ground, but I think Ablett's, oh, shit. Ablett's got him in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and Ablett plays a lot taller than what he actually is. Yeah. Um, and I think okay. maybe Hardigan might find himself on him at times as well. Well, particularly if Ablett and Danger have a bit of yep. a swapsy yep. on there. Um, look, I think Geelong are, are a bit caught the same as we are in maybe being a bit short of a couple of goals up forward. Yeah. Tommy Hawkins has been a bit up and down. Um, well, he's had a really good year, but he struggles when he doesn't get the supply. Like we saw last week yeah. that as soon as he was you know, basically cut out of the game... When they did start getting back on top and getting some more forward entries, he didn't really find himself back in it. He did a couple of good things, but he didn't kick any goals. Um, yeah. And they really missed it. Yeah. So their ability to kick goals or enough goals mm. is probably similar to ours. Yeah. And they play a different style. We like to get the repeat forward 50s and all the rest of it. John liked to get value for entries. Yep. Um, and so, they play off turnover as well. Yeah. So very interesting. Yep. Um, so key players, mate. Um, who do you reckon are the keys for Geelong? 
Um, and we've sort of touched on these guys already, but I think Dangerfield in the midfield is going to be a massive one for them. Obviously, like it's Danger, so we all know what he brings. But in terms of the way the game's going to be played, they're going to rely on Danger heavily for his contested ball and his clearance work. Yeah. It, when he came into the midfield in the second quarter against Port last week, the game turned a bit and yeah. it got Geelong back into the game because Port were all over him at that point. So yeah. I think that Dangerfield's really going to have to have an impact in close because um, if he doesn't, we're going to get right on top in contested ball and they're going to struggle, especially if Tim Kelly doesn't have an impact like mm. he didn't last week as well. Mm. Uh, the next one, and again, we've talked about him, but Tom Hawkins, I think that he really needs to have an impact, whether it be kicking goals or at least setting him up, because if he goes missing, they don't really have anyone else apart from, like we said, Ablett, who can kick him. Um, they're going to have you know people that chip in here or there with one or two, but he's the one that they rely on to kick a bag. And like you said, he does tend to go missing. If yeah. he's not kicking goals himself, he's not the sort of bloke that will just sit there and create a contest. Yeah. Well, he's also not like someone like Tex who has a bit of a, an extra element to his game where he can set blokes up, yeah. whether it be by hand or by foot. Yeah, yeah. Walkins, uh, Walkins, Hawkins is very much the bloke. Brian Walkins. <laughs> <laughs> I've had too many of these. Hawkins is the bloke that normally gets on, on, on the end of all the hard work, and that's yeah. not, a, nothing, not a knock on him, but he needs to find a way to have more of an impact if he is struggling to impact yeah. the scoreboard directly. Yeah. Um, and he, they're going to really rely on him to kick a couple of goals, I think. Um, and then the last one, and this is probably the matchup of the game, I, I think, think, so too. is yeah. the move to put Blitzars in the ruck and I from a Geelong perspective I think that's a really good move because O'Brien's not a monster so Blitzars you know being a little bit undersized isn't going to be a massive deal but we already know that Blitzars has got a really good tank and he's versatile he's skillful um, and he's shown in the past that he can run with whoever it yeah, doesn't matter he's, yeah. a, he's actually a good tagger yeah. um, it's good from our perspective that they've decided to play him in that role because it means he's not going to be down back um, or up forward kicking goals for that matter but that, that match-up there for them is massive. If Blitzarves can get on top of O'Brien and maybe even push him forward a little bit and try and make him defend, um, I think that Blitzarves is going to be massive for them. Well, and the other thing with Blitzarves too is what do they do with him when Reece Stanley's on? Like when they're giving yeah. Blitzarves a break, they yeah. might take him off, but they might also just shuffle him up forward as well or stick him on a wing for five minutes and... Yeah. Um, he's not the know, type of bloke that needs much of a rest. No, he's no, that's yeah. right. And like he's highly underrated, I think, with Sars mm-hmm. in terms of what he offers Geelong. There's yeah. so much versatility. Well he plays anywhere. He can play on a wing, yeah. he can play in the midfield, he can play on a ruck, he can play down back, he can play forward, he can play anywhere. Yeah. There's not many players that can say that. Yeah. No, uh, so good. I uh, really really like that one. Shut up, Brian. And it leads very well into my uh, keys because I, my first one is Riley O'Brien. Yeah. Riley O'Brien. Yeah. Brian. Oh, Brian. <laughs> um, because I, I think uh, this is going to be a big test for Riley. But what O'Brien's got over Blitzhards is his work in tight, mm-hmm. his second efforts, his mongrel. Yep. Uh, and he, I think will really try to do similar to what he did last game yeah. uh, in terms of trying to run blokes off off their feet. I would actually go as far as saying this might even be his biggest challenge yet. I know he's played on Gorn, um, and in terms of like, you know, Ruckman v Ruckman, that's as big as it gets. But I think that having someone that's basically going to play that position just to negate him, he wouldn't have had that sort of attention yet. No. And I think it's going to be his biggest challenge. But if he comes out with the same intent that he did against Mumford a couple of weeks yep. ago, and I know Blitzhouse is a completely different yeah, player yeah, to Mumford, course. But he he didn't shy away. What no. I loved about it was that he didn't go, oh, it's Mumford. Yeah. He just went, right, I'm no, taking I'm yeah. taking this yeah. and you're going to have to chase me. And I think if he does the same, if he has the same sort of intent against Blitzars as in terms of not his ruck work, but his second efforts, his ground ball and all the rest yep. of it. Uh, I think the biggest test for Riley is if they push Blitzars forward. Yep. Because he hasn't um, really had to defend that yet. Because Gorn didn't even really get forward that much. Not really, no. Yeah, so you're right. So if they do decide... And I think they're obviously going to try and expose O'Brien yep. as well as negate him. I yep. think they're going to try and expose him. Bit of um, respect for the big bloke, though. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's a measure of how well he's going that yep. they're spending that much time thinking yep. about him. Yep. Um, look, I think um, the, uh, the other key that we've got is the Berg. The Berg, you're right. Um, yeah. Well... Because big shoes to fill down there now that Jenkins has sorted right. it out. Well, Jenkins had sorted it out. Yeah. Um, he was uh, imposing himself on the game. He was hitting the scoreboard. Yep. Uh, you know, we repla- We need Elliot to replace three goals a game, basically. Yeah, because we can't rely on 
text to take all of that no. as a key forward. He's no. not going to be able to do it. And the thing is that Elliot's got a run of games now where he's the man, yep. right? Jenkins is out for whatever it is, six weeks yep. or whatever. Yep. Um, so Elliot knows that he's the man for yep. six weeks. Yep. And he needs to hit the ground running, he needs to hit the contest hard, and he needs to hit the scoreboard when he's got the opportunity. Well, and from Elliot's perspective, and I know it's a bit different, but like you know that the team or the team selectors have backed in a bloke like Riley O'Brien on form because... Just shut up. struggling with Brian. Right? <laughs> uh, backed in a bloke like Riley O'Brien on form and stopped Jacobs coming back in. Yeah. So if Himmelberg comes in and starts kicking six a game, he might force his way into the team one way or the other. We've got two of our normal mainstays out in Lynch and Jenkins at the moment. He might force them to sit a couple of weeks extra than they would have otherwise. Yeah. So he's got to take it by the scruff of the neck. Well, he's got to take every opportunity, yeah. basically. And not only for himself, but this week, in order for us to win, yep. he's got to realise that he is a key part of our yeah. recipe for winning. Yep. He's not a bit player. He's not there just to make up the numbers. He is a big part of the team, yep. So and he has to perform. So yep. big game for Elliot. Yep. And I think my third guy is whoever basically plays on Ablett, <laughs> <laughs> which is likely going to be Luke Brown. Yep. Luke Bryan. Brian. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> Idiot. Um, you know, I think Brown will get first crack. Um, I do think you're right that Ablett it holds the key to Geelong kicking enough goals. Yep. Um, they've obviously gone small, so I yep. think there'll be a fair bit of chaos going in there. Yeah, and they'll probably rely on the midfielders to kick a few goals as well. Yep. Uh, but in terms of midfield, uh, forward p- firepower, yep. um, you know, particularly if Hawkins does get held, Yep. Um, G. Ablett is the one, and I think Luke Brown will get first crack. Carl might yeah. get a bit of a bit of time if, if uh, Ablett does get off the chain a bit. And like you said, if Ablett and or Dangerfield start exposing Luke Brown in the air, then I think Kyle Hardigan's the man, or Alex Keith, but probably Kyle Hardigan, I think. What about Jake Kelly? I know Jake Kelly isn't... Uh, I'm not considered a high IQ player, but mm. he's a good shutdown and he's been pretty good the last few weeks in that sort of a role. Maybe he goes to an Ablett or a danger field when they go down it's there. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Um, but I, I do think that Luke Brown will get first crack yep. um, at that. And I think it's pivotal that we keep Ablett and or danger field as quiet as we can yeah. uh, when they're up forward. Well, because both have got a habit of kicking big goals in difficult situations. Mm. Like... Dangerfield, At key times. Yeah, Dangerfield's done it multiple times this year. Ablett's done it multiple times this year. And they always kick him from stupid spots as yeah. well. Like Ablett did it to us earlier in the year. Mm. We were coming back and then Ablett slots one from 50 out in a set yeah. shot. And that's game over. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I 100% agree with what you said there. Oh, very good. I know, it doesn't happen very often, does it? <laughs> so you're one of the Scott brothers. Who is it? Chris? Brad? Brad? Chris? Is it Brad or Chris? Uh, Briss. Or Crot, Crad. Crot. Crad. <laughs> Crad Scott. <laughs> Crot. Crot Crad. Um, yes, so I'm the coach for Geelong. How we win, I think, to be honest, we've got, a, we've got a slow ball movement down, for one. We've got to allow our defence to set up, but I also think that it's pivotal that they win the contested ball. They showed last week that they lost when they lost the contested ball. So key players, mate, um, who do you reckon are the keys for Geelong? Um, and so you're one of the Scott brothers. Who was it? Chris? Brad? Brad? Chris? Is it Brad or Chris? Uh, Briss. Or Crot. Crad. Crot. <laughs> Crad. Crad Scott. <laughs> Crot. <laughs> Crot Crad. Um, yes, so I'm the coach for Geelong. How we win, I think, to be honest, we've got a we've got a slow ball movement down, for one. We've got to allow our defence to set up, but I also think that it's pivotal that they win the contested ball. They showed last week that they lost when they lost the contested ball and then also clearances. They, they really had no answer for it because the ball was just flying in into the opposition forward line and they just couldn't stop the stop or stem the flow. And the only way that they did do that is when they changed the midfield setup and Danger went in there and started winning a bit more ball. So I think that if you're one of the Scott brothers, whoever it is, I can't remember, um, you've got to really slow the ball movement down when we don't have the ball um, so that we can use that third up um, that they yeah. like to do to chop out in the air. Um, and then, you know, slingshot off the back with Tui and Stewart. Um, but then also got to win the clearances and the contested ball. Yeah. That's going to be what I think that's going to get them over the line. Yeah. Now, we haven't talked any about Scott Selwood. But is Scott Selwood going to be doing a job on Brad Crouch, do you think? He's an emergency. That's why. <coughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to cut that out because that was ridiculous. I thought he was on the bench. <laughs> Woo! 
Oh, yeah. All right. Um, look, if I'm Pikey, um, I think we need to uh, be focused on how we uh, have been playing over the last month to six weeks. Yeah. I think if we get caught in the same old bloody blueprint game style that happens against Geelong all the time where we get forced to kick long and all the rest of it. We play differently to that now, though. Well, we are. Yeah. And I think it's important that the team continues to play that way and not fall into old habits. Yeah. Geelong will obviously try to restrict our corridor work. We've shown over the last month that we want to use the corridor against uh, um, Richmond. Richmond in particular. We yep. try to use yeah, the corridor. It seems to be the first possible. option. And Geelong traditionally make it a point of stopping us from using the corridor and really trying to slow our switch down yep. so that we kick down the line. Well, I actually heard Pikey come out and say that they're like it's going to be no point switching the ball on Goomba. Stadium because it's so narrow. The ice arena. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> um, basically indicating that they're going to just go up the ground mm. straight up the middle. So, and I don't mind that. No, I don't mind it either. Um, and I think it's going to be key. I think. Look, if if we have, I think we need to have a lot more possession than Geelong. Yep. We need to be able to maintain possession and set ourselves up properly. I think we need to be extremely. Ferocious at the contest because we do have to win contested ball. Yep. Um, as you mentioned, it's going to be important for Geelong, but I think it's key for us that we yep. win contested ball, get first use, and I think we have to do as well as we possibly can with our forward fifty entries. I yeah. think we need to maintain our composure going forward. Be patient. Yeah. Uh, absolutely right. Yeah. Being patient is going to be key, and having the confidence to be able to move the ball uh, aggressively. So. I think you said earlier, mm. fast fast ball movement doesn't necessarily mean you know slingshot down the ground, yeah, but it, it means decisive yeah. ball movement, yeah. probably more by foot than by hand, I would imagine. Yeah, because well, all you've got to do, and again, Port did this last week, keep harping on about it, but all they were doing is t- kicking to a, a player that was in the clear, turning and going straight away, hitting the next bloke, turning and going straight away, hitting the next bloke. And that's what the, that's what you've got to do. Yeah, because, well, then you don't allow them to, to zone so, up. Yeah, to set up. And you're not taking too much of a risk because even though you're kicking to a dangerous part of the ground, it's only a 30-metre kick. Um, and as long as you, your foot skills are pretty good and you put it out in front of them, there's no one that's really going to yeah. be able to chop it out. Yeah. Um, and if they if they do that enough times, it's not going to allow poor, uh, sorry, Geelong to get into the game airily. Um, and it means that if the forward entries are going to take care of themselves because yeah. you're just hitting that lead up. And then it's our ability to obviously take advantage of our opportunities. Which I have to Which admit, is 50-50 yeah. for us. 50-50. We've, we've blazed away a little bit, I have to admit, especially yeah. against Richmond, I yeah. thought. So. Yeah, we did. And a little bit of that is panic, I reckon. Do you reckon it's panic or do you reckon it's just the state of the game? No. Because I, I've watched a bit of footy and everyone would have because we're all AFL fans, but no one is really clinical in front of goal at the moment. No, it's, it is interesting, isn't yeah. it? Because uh, is it... Uh, we're not as good at kicking goals or like as a, a, a competition on the whole or is it that the I, game has become a lot faster and more high pressure that it's harder to kick them? Well, it's the set shots that get missed that, that kill me. Yeah, but gone are the days where you could camp at full forward all day and just hit up a lead and then go back and kick a set shot. A lot of these blokes have come off you know, a 200 metre effort. You know, It's a lot harder to do it after you're buggered. Mm. You know, that's, and it's been proven. Like, well, yeah. I think the fatigue is probably the key there because... Yeah. With the rotations coming down, a yeah. uh, bloke's spending more time on the ground. I've, I've noticed doing the rap, you'd read the time on ground stats and they were in the mid-70s and yeah. now they're in the mid to high 80s. Yeah, yeah. You know. yep. So blokes are more fatigued and I think that does have an impact on not only your skills but your your ability to think your way through yeah, situations. Stay calm and whatever, yeah. yeah. So look, you know, as I mentioned, for us it's composure, aggression at the contest and having enough possession. Um you know, I would imagine a hundred more uncontested positives than Geelong is going to be needed. Yep. Um, for us to win the game. Cool. So you're one of the Scott brothers. Who was it? Chris. Brad. Brad. Chris. Right. Well, that's a good segue into the tips then. So massive game, like we've spoken about, and if we want to make top four, we've like I think we've got a game against Geelong. We've got a game against Collingwood at home. We play Essendon as well, which is a tricky one, and there's another showdown. One. Showdown. Oh, and we also play West Coast away. Yeah. So out of those five games, if we're going to make top four, we need to win at least three of them. Yeah. And 
I don't think any of them are a gimme. Nope. So really, it's going to cut us above from, um, you know, it's going to show whether we're up to the top four standard yeah. or yeah. it's going to show that we're still middle of the yeah. row. So on the back of that, do you think we're going to win? Do you think we're well, up to it? What you said there is very key because it's going to show whether we're a top four standard. Yeah. And I firmly believe that we are top four standard. Yeah. And on that basis, and given the change in our game style, and given the way we match up on paper, I'm actually reasonably confident. I'm not as confident as I was before I knew that CY was out. Mm. Um, and you never know how we're going to turn up after the buy. Yep. I think we're 50-50 or 60-40 after yeah, the, the buy. Yeah, the guide, yeah. And we know what um, Geelong do two games out from a buy. Yeah, lose every game after the buy, but then win every game after yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I'm as long as if we turn up, yep. I'm very confident, and I think we'll win by three. Yeah, and see, the biggest thing for me there is, do we turn up? Yeah, because I have no doubt that if we turn up, we'll at least give it a good shake. Whether we win or not is remain to be seen. Um, but oh, I tell you what, I'm tentatively um, tipping us, and I think it'll be by under a goal. Under a goal. Yeah, I'm gonna go. Hard for to it. win under a goal at, uh, by under a goal at the Cattery. Yeah, but. We've been in those situations previously, and we do pretty well in those late game situations. Yeah, done it a few times against Sydney. We should have beat Port that time. Yeah. Um, we've, we've got a habit of just doing enough to come back and take take victory out of the jaws of defeat. I think this game is going to uh, be a breakout game for a couple of people. I hope so. The Berg, and I'm just going to pull one out of left field that we haven't even talked about at all. The Gooch. Oh, where's that come from? The Gooch. You've had too many scotches. No, no. I just remembered he was playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Gooch has been threatening. Very good value for possessions, the Gooch. Yeah, absolutely. But I just had this feeling this is going to be like a real team-defining game. I don't know why. Probably because of the too much of this. I hope. I, I don't share your optimism, but I, I hope that mm. you're right. Mm. This is one of the times where I'd be happy if you were right. <laughs> one of the times one of the times very few times and on that note <laughs> yeah. now look uh, thanks very much to Ryan at Smith Partners Real Estate uh, for supporting the Crowcast we really appreciate uh, his support and that of his uh, real estate company up there at Golden Grove get along to the village at Golden Grove uh, if you're buying or selling or renting uh, down to earth re- uh, oh, do that every time down to earth electrical yep uh, anywhere in Adelaide mm. if you blow a fuse like you did with your Brian or any other <laughs> electrical needs. And of course, a huge thank you to our ongoing supporters on Patreon. If you do want to support the Crowcast, you can get along to Patreon at patreon.com forward slash AFL Crowcast, or you can go to aflcrowcast.com and click the Patreon button. Yep. That's it. Oh, that's it. No more. That's a very short, short, sharp to the point. Normally, your outros go for half the video. Well, you can go to aflcrowcast.com <laughs> and you can write an article if you like. Uh, and, you know, it's an aggregation of all the AFL news, not just the Crows news, not just the podcast. Wow, that's all... convenient, isn't it? You can go to the one website, everything on the Crows, everything on the AFL, plus all our podcasts. Well, that's just amazing. All in the one spot. That's amazing. But who cares about the AFL app? No. No, that's no. shit anyway. Close it'll... the internet. It it's... breaks down. <laughs> Anyway, now we've gone on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, of course, we'll be back for the rap show at 7 p.m. on Sunday night. So join myself and Nikki and Macca for that, where we'll be celebrating a famous win, Cameron. A famous win. I hope so. Get revved up. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Until then, guys, thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you later on.